Someone who really embodied this ability, he said, was our neighbor, the great artist, Gusti Newman Lempard. When I spoke to him here, he was 116 years old. The long fingernails of his left hand symbolize that his powers extend beyond his physical body. The great sage of Hindu Balinese mythology and the arts. He was known even in Europe in the 1920s for his superb religious and erotic art. But at home, it's for his temple sculpture and architecture that he's most recognized. Lempad has left his mark on 20th century Bali. Born into an era of omnipotent princes, he survived into the age of astronauts, one of whom he actually met when Ron Evans sought him out in his highland community. The two exchanged very different views of the moon that Evans had actually walked on and which Lempard had touched in other ways. This early drawing tells the story of the seven celestial nymphs of the Pleiades, who fly down using their sarongs as wings to bathe in the waters of the world. A young prince spies on them, falls in love with the youngest and steals her sarong, so she can't fly back to the heavens. He returns it to her only when she bears him a child, half heaven, half earth. That child is all children. If a Balinese child cries at night, he's comforted by being shown the night sky. There is your mother, they tell him, who we all come from and where we all return, so there's no reason for tears. Lawrence and I returned home to Bali to find a crowd gathered in the house of the old artist Gusti Lempard. After 116 years in the material world, he had finally chosen his time to die. Family and friends were tenderly bathing and preparing his body. Like all Balinese, his widow, Gustin Young, would never have assigned the task to professional strangers. News of his death had spread fast. It wasn't the fact of his dying that they were all talking about, but the way of it. He had been waiting a long time for the perfect day. The sun was rising at its closest annual point to the great mountain. And it was the ritual day he'd always chosen to complete his major works of art. He gathered his family around, bade them farewell, and simply let go. To us, this conscious death was quite amazing. But our friend Batuan laughed. If you live creatively to 116, he said, you should know how to die. It's not enough just to be clever or just spiritual. You must be complete, as he was. Six weeks later, Gusti Lempard was cremated. Within hours, his cremation tower and bull, weeks of work by the island's finest artists, would be reduced to ashes, along with his body. It was not a day for mourning, but for celebration.
Through the flames, he could break free from the shadow world and pass beyond the screen. Lempard had heard the roar of Krakatoa. He had witnessed its sunsets, far more awesome than those produced by its child, when we visited it a hundred years later. <laughs> 